Hello everyone, this is Beth Gregg and I represent Residential Health Services at Windermere. I'm glad you are joining us for this presentation about arthritis life hacks. Before we get too far into the presentation, I think it's important that you learn a little bit about the anatomy of your body and to understand some of the terminology that we'll be using uh, during this presentation. So I'll give you some definitions of some of the body parts that you'll see on the screen in front of you. Joint. A joint is the place where two or more bones come together and motion occurs. Cartilage. Cartilage is the thin cushioning layer on the surfaces of the ends of the bone. Cartilage is a shock absorber. It has no blood vessels, so it doesn't heal well. Joint capsule. A joint capsule is the casing surrounding the joint. Synovium. Synovium is the thin lining of the joint capsule, which makes joint fluid to nourish the cartilage and lubricate the joint. Muscles, ligaments, and tendons. These surround, support, and protect the joints. Muscles tighten to cause movement. Ligaments attach bones to other bones. Tendons attach muscles to bones. Bursa. Bursa is a fluid-filled sac that cushions high friction areas. There are two types of arthritis that we're going to focus on primarily during this discussion. One is rheumatoid arthritis and the other is osteoarthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a disease of the joint lining, the synovium that we discussed before. Osteoarthritis primarily affects cartilage and bone. As you can see on this chart, this describes the differences between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. With osteoarthritis, it usually begins after the age of 40. Usually it affects weight-bearing joints such as knees and hips, but can also affect the finger joints. Pain is often on one side of the body only. The joint appearance is usually cool, not red or swollen. If you have morning joint stiffness, it usually lasts only for a few minutes. Symptoms besides joint pain and stiffness usually don't affect your overall health. With the disease progression, symptoms gradually worsen over a period of years. And typically, the things that ease pain and stiffness, um, it helps when you rest and it gets worse with activity. Rheumatoid arthritis is a little different. It may begin at any age, but usually before the age of 50. It usually affects small joints such as the hand, foot, wrist, elbow, shoulder, or ankle, and it's usually on both sides of the body. The joint appearance can cause the joints to be warm, red, and swollen because of inflammation. Morning joint stiffness can last for at least 30 minutes and sometimes can persist for hours. Other symptoms besides joint pain and stiffness include fatigue, weight loss, and fever. Symptoms may worsen over a period of weeks or months. And what can help decrease the pain and stiffness is activity. We're going to dig in a little deeper to osteoarthritis. The picture on the screen shows a normal joint on the left and a joint that has osteoarthritis on the right. Osteoarthritis is also called degenerative arthritis and it's the most common type of arthritis. The smooth cartilage breaks down, bone spurs form, and the bone under the cartilage hardens. What are some of the risk factors for getting osteoarthritis? Family history, being overweight, past joint injury, and joint overuse are risk factors. How much joint pain you feel does not always match the amount of damage to the joint. Rheumatoid arthritis looks different than osteoarthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory disorder that can affect more than just your joints. In some people, the condition can damage a wide variety of body systems, including the skin, eyes, lungs, heart, and blood vessels. In autoimmune disorder, rheumatoid arthritis occurs when your immune system mistakenly attacks your own body's tissues. Unlike the wear and tear of osteoarthritis, 
Rheumatoid arthritis affects the lining of your joints, causing a painful swelling that can eventually result in bone erosion and joint deformity. The inflammation associated with rheumatoid arthritis is what can damage other parts of the body as well. People with rheumatoid arthritis are more likely to have heart disease, diabetes, osteoporosis, and COPD, otherwise known as emphysema. When you see your physician about arthritis, there are different ways that they will do a diagnosis to determine what type of arthritis you have and how it's affecting your body. They can do blood, urine, or joint fluid testing. They might do x-rays to see cartilage lost, bone damage, and bone spurs. A CT scan can help show bone or soft tissue damage. An MRI looks at the soft tissues like the cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. And an ultrasound looks at soft tissues, cartilage, and fluid containing structures such as the bursi. Building the right healthcare team is a crucial step in managing arthritis and your pain. In creating your team, you may need different professionals with different kinds of expertise. Some of the healthcare professionals that might be part of your healthcare team would be your primary care physician, rheumatologist, doctor of osteopathic medicine, orthopedic surgeon, pain specialist, physiatrist, also known as a rehab physician, neurologist, psychologist or psychiatrist, chiropractor, podiatrist, nurse, physical and occupational therapist, pharmacist, dietitian, and sleep specialist. Don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion if you're not comfortable with the direction that your care is going in. Be sure to keep a record of your healthcare team's contact information. And if you're looking for local resources for healthcare professionals that will assist you with your arthritis, come talk to one of the nurses in residential health services. We're very happy to connect you to those resources and to give you phone numbers. It's very important that when you meet with your physicians and care providers regarding your arthritis, that you communicate effectively. Describe the pain. Is it aching, throbbing, stabbing, tender, or nagging? When do you have the pain? Is it worse at certain times of the day or after particular activities? Do you experience symptoms other than pain on a regular basis, like stomach upset, fatigue, sleep problems, or emotional issues? When did the pain begin? Can you relate the onset of your pain to another event in your life, such as surgery or injury? What are all of the things that you do to relieve your pain, like medicines, physical activity, relaxation, prayer, massage, or other things? How are you feeling emotionally? Consider writing down these answers before you go in to see your doctor. So you'll have the ability to communicate effectively, specifically about what's going on in your life. You will work with your team to develop a comprehensive pain management plan personalized for your needs. Be sure that the following steps are incorporated into your plan. Learning about your disease and pain, working with health professionals, medication, physical activity, natural therapies, self-care, diet and nutrition, stress management, and sleep. There are many different medications that can be used for arthritis. Some of them include medications that slow or stop your immune system from attacking your joints in the cases of rheumatoid arthritis. Corticosteroids can reduce inflammation and suppresses immune system. It can be taken orally or injected into a painful joint. And for steroid injections, you may need to have injections in the same joint every few months. There are also gel injections that can be done. And usually with these, they re reach their peak eight weeks after the shot is given. And the effect can last up to 24 weeks. There are also other medications that can help reduce cartilage degeneration and slow cartilage breakdown. Of course, when you're having arthritic pain, you're looking for medications that will help reduce the pain. 
Your physician might recommend some pain relievers like Tylenol, Ultrem, Norco. Usually they try to start with the, uh, the least strong uh, medication first and then gradually they can increase it um, higher in strength um, depending on how your body responds to the medications. They might also recommend NSAIDs. Um, to relieve pain and inflammation. And some common NSAIDs are ibuprofen, Aleve, Motrin. These can be taken in pill form or they do have them in, in cream and gel formation. Um, there are also other uh, products that are called counter irritants like Icy Hot or Bengay. What these products do is they interfere with the brain's transmission of pain signals um, and helps to reduce pain by distracting the brain away from the pain that's going on in the body. Other medications that can be used for your arthritis plan um, include ones that deal with other symptoms that you might be facing relating to your arthritis sedatives and sleep medication. Sometimes anti-seizure medication can be used to treat some kinds of pain related to arthritis. Antidepressants like Cymbalta can be effective to interrupt pain signals in the nervous system. Or dietary supplements to fight pain and inflammation, enhance sleep, reduce fatigue, and boost mood. Always be sure to check with your physician and pharmacist before taking any dietary supplements to be sure that they're not going to cause you additional side effects or interfere with your uh, prescriptive medication. Supplements are not regulated by the government, so be sure that you read labels carefully. Tell every healthcare practitioner that you see what medications and what supplements you take. Some common supplements for arthritis include glucosamine. Some studies show benefit while others do not. New treatment studies do find that glucosamine is, quote, not effective for disease modification and, quote, uncertain for symptom relief. While a lot of residents have described to us the relief that they feel from taking glucosamine, it would be an important thing to discuss whether you should take it or not with your healthcare provider. It is strongly recommended to avoid the supplements that are listed on the screen. Again, because supplements are not regulated and many can have some significant side effects or interfere with medications, it's very important to review any supplements that you're interested in taking with your pharmacist or with your physician. There is a lot of information in the news lately about medical marijuana, CBD oil, and the relationship with rheumatoid arthritis. Researchers still don't know a lot about how marijuana affects your body, but there is some evidence that it can help reduce and relieve long-term pain. And pain, of course, is a major symptom of arthritis. Some studies indicate that medical marijuana or CBD oil can curb morning pain, improve your sleep, and lower inflammation in joints. THC, one of the components in marijuana, was found to be 20 times stronger than aspirin and two times stronger than hydrocortisone at reducing inflammation. So you might be questioning, is cannabis right for you? The best way to answer this is to talk to your doctor. They can tell you about potential side effects and drug interactions, legal considerations, and which form and at which dose might help you the most. Another way to reduce pain and inflammation is to use cold therapy. Cold is best for acute pain because it reduces swelling and it numbs nerve endings. You can buy reusable cold packs um, in the pharmacy. You can get other kinds of tools uh, like the one on the right in a pharmacy or online on Amazon. Um, or you can use a good old fashioned bag of frozen vegetables um, wrap it in a towel and put it on the joint. It settles in and surrounds the joint nicely and it is able to be reused and very cost effective. Plan to use your ice pack for 15 minutes on and then remove it for 15 minutes and continue throughout the day. Do not put the ice pack directly on the skin in order to prevent frostbite. Some people benefit from heat therapy. Heat relaxes muscles and stimulates blood circulation. So it's good for easing morning stiffness and getting the body limber and ready to exercise. This can be done with dry heat, like from a heating pad, which you see on the left, 
or moist heat like from a warm bath. Water temperature between 92 and 100 degrees is best. Soaking in a warm bath and then gently stretching afterwards can be a good thing to try. You can also look for a warm water pool. People who participate in warm water exercise programs two or three times a week report decreased pain as much as 40%. They also reported increased physical function, emotional boost, and better sleep. Nerve treatments for arthritis. Nerve treatments ease pain, but won't change underlying arthritis or slow the disease progression. Your doctor might suggest radiofrequency ablation. What happens with this is a heated needle is inserted next to a nerve which interrupts the pain signals. The relief can last up to a year. They might also suggest cryoneurolysis, which is similar to radiofrequency ablation, but it uses liquid nitrous oxide to cold damage the nerves. They might also suggest a nerve block where a local anesthetic like lidocaine is injected into a nerve, or an intrathecal pain pump. A pain pump is filled with pain medication that's surgically implanted into the body for pain relief. Some people seek out alternative medicine when dealing with arthritis, pain, and symptom management. Here are some different ways that alternative medicine can be incorporated into your pain routine. Acupuncture. This is when fine needles are inserted in specific points on the skin to reduce pain. The use of acupuncture to treat arthritis is gaining popularity and approval from the, from the medical community. It is a safe, sterile practice that is 2,000 years old with many success stories to back it up. Some people find benefits in using acupressure, based on the same principle as acupuncture, but uses hands to apply pressure rather than needles. Yoga or Tai Chi is a great way to uh, reduce some of the symptoms of arthritis because of the slow stretching movements, which can help improve joint flexibility and your range of motion. And massage therapy can be very beneficial. The light stroking and kneading of muscles may increase blood flow and warm affected joints. If you're interested in any of these alternative treatments, stop in and see one of the nurses in residential health and we're happy to give you information about uh, services that are in our surrounding community that provide these treatments. Consider incorporating physical and occupational therapy into your arthritis plan. Physical therapy can help improve mobility, restore use of affected joints, increase muscle strength to support joints, reduce pain, and maintain flexibility. Improvement is gradual, so ongoing practice is essential. Occupational therapy can help you adapt your environment to fit your needs. They can suggest assistive devices and can show you ways to do things with less pain. If you're interested in having a physical therapist or an occupational therapist work with you, stop down to Residential Health Services and we can talk you through your options and help you get set up with these wonderful therapies. The next few slides are going to talk you through some assistive devices that you can consider purchasing and using to help relieve your symptoms, reduce your pain, and improve your functionality. Braces and splints can be worn. They can be fitted by therapists to align and support joints, to protect from damage, and to ease pain. The next few slides are going to show you some other assistive devices that you can use to make your life easier and decrease your pain with your everyday functional tasks. Most of these devices can be found on Amazon, um, but Residential Health also has some catalogs of arthritis equipment, such as the ones that I'm going to be showing. You're welcome to borrow or take the catalogs, or if you want to look on Amazon, um, we're happy to help you do that to, to try to find the tools that are going to be right for you. Some of the tools include things like on the left, the um, utensils for eating with built up handles. The built up handles help you hold the tools more easily if you have decreased grip strength or pain in your hands and it just makes eating uh, simpler, easier and, and less painful. Um, the product on the right is a great tool for carrying grocery bags. 
um, instead of putting a lot of pain and pressure on your hands, if you're having arthritic pain there, this tool will easily help you carry the bags even if you have decreased hand strength or pain. The tool on the left is a button hooker. It's a tool that you can use to help you button your shirts. We know that sometimes the buttons can be very small and difficult to close when you have limited dexterity or pain in your hands. So a tool like this might be very helpful for you. On the right is a type of scissors that you might find easier to use. It has a spring-loaded action, so it automatically opens back up again, um, which helps when you're having um, difficulty with hand uh, flexibility and, and pain, this pair of scissors might make things a little bit easier for you. On the left is a tool if you like to play cards and you find it difficult to hold the cards in your hand, something like this could be a great strategy for you to use to make it a little bit easier to stay engaged in those social activities that you really enjoy, even if you're having arthritic problems. The tool on the right um, shows a way that you'll be able to open up your bottles um, a little bit easier. It's a flexible bottle opener, even for those little tiny water bottle caps that can be really difficult to open up when you have arthritis. On the left is a wonderful tool if you have arthritic pain and you have difficulty managing your keys in your door, trying to turn the keys and trying to get them settled in if you have decreased hand strength or pain. Um, it connects to your keys and it gives you a lever that you can use to more easily use your keys. Um, and on the right is a jar opener. We're all familiar with different kinds of jar openers, and there are a lot of different products out there right now to make that task easier for you. Sometimes, despite trying all of these different strategies or some of these strategies to reduce your arthritic discomfort and to improve your function, sometimes it's just not enough. And at that point, your doctor might recommend some surgery. There are some different kinds of surgery that they might consider and we'll talk with you about. They might discuss joint repair. This is when they smooth or realign joint surfaces to reduce pain and improve function. They might talk about a joint replacement. This is commonly done in hips and knees. They might discuss a joint fusion. This is used for smaller joints like wrists, ankles, and fingers. It removes the ends of two bones in the joint and locks them together. Or they might talk with you about joint lavage, which is flushing the joint to remove tissue fragments. Another component of your arthritis management plan is to discuss lifestyle modifications, things that you can do on your own that aren't related to medicine, aren't related to surgery, but lifestyle changes to help improve your functionality and reduce pain. Try to maintain a healthy weight. For every pound of body weight you lose, there is a four pound reduction of stress on your knees. Scientists are proving that fat cells release chemicals into the body that promote inflammation, furthering the link between obesity and arthritis. Lifestyle modifications with your diet. Studies have shown that people with arthritis can benefit from the Mediterranean diet that focuses on fresh fruits and vegetables, fish, beans, and extra virgin olive oil. As you can see on the slide, they are talking about superfoods that you can make sure to take in that help to tackle arthritis, cherries, olive oil, broccoli, oatmeal, green tea, oranges, and almonds in particular can be helpful. Some medications that you take for arthritis can affect your nutritional status. Talk to your doctor or physician about medications to see if any might be impacting your nutrition. Exercise is an important component to your lifestyle modifications. Moving your body is one of the best things you can do for arthritis. Regular exercise helps you to strengthen your muscles, tendons, and ligaments. It takes the pressure off of your joints and reduces your pain. It delays the onset of disability, improves independence, boosts endurance, helps control your weight, lowers the risk of a heart disease and diabetes, and enhances your overall quality of life. Be sure to talk to your physician before starting a new exercise program. And you can talk to our Windermere Fitness Manager to get tips on the best exercises for people with arthritis. Start slowly and increase your pace and intensity gradually. If you have more joint pain or experience a flare, Listen to your body. Respect your pain. 
Some discomfort is normal, but should be minimal. If you experience more discomfort or sharp feeling, stop. You can get as much of the same benefits from three 10 minute walks as you can from one 30 minute walk. Buddy up with somebody. Working out with a friend can provide motivation and make exercising fun. If you're going to be buying new fitness shoes, make sure that you shop late in the day. Choose, choose shoes with solid ankle support. They should be comfortable immediately and require zero break in time. Some good exercises for people with arthritis include water walking or water exercise, just regular walking, cycling, using the new step, Pilates, yoga, or Tai Chi, and other social sports and activities. And on the screen, it shows you some gentle arthritis exercises that you can incorporate into your routine. Your attitude is also a lifestyle modification that you can look to address. Your mind plays an important role in how you feel about pain and your illness. Keep a positive attitude. Try to build your life around wellness, not pain or sickness. Think positive thoughts, have a sense of humor, and develop a strong support network. Don't dwell. The amount of time you spend thinking about pain has a lot to do with how much discomfort you feel. Shift your focus with distraction. Do fun things. This releases feel-good chemicals that can ease pain. Change your habits and avoid relying on unhealthy practices like drinking alcohol to escape your pain. So what do you do if you suddenly have your arthritis pain taking over your body? We call this an arthritis flare. An arthritis flare is a period of increasing disease activity that can occur in both arthritis and inflammatory arthritis. It's important that you talk to your medical team about what you should do if you have a flare. Some of the symptoms can include fever, fatigue, um, or increased joint pain, stiffness, and swelling. What can cause a flare? A lot of different reasons. Sometimes too much activity, weather changes, stress, infection. You want to balance periods of activity with periods of rest. Keep your joints from becoming stiff by moving them through the fullest range of motion possible. Communicate with your family and friends. Let them know what's going on. Ask for help and delegate. Apply a hot or cold pack to inflame joints. Practice relaxation or mind diversion techniques. Try over-the-counter pain medications. Rest. Look to see how you can reduce stress and call your doctor for further guidance. There are some wonderful resources available online um, and in the general community. The Arthritis Foundation has wonderful materials with information about the disease itself, management strategies, lifestyle modifications, assistance with insurance questions, access to care, community support, referrals. Their phone number is one 844 571 H E L P, or you can visit arthritis.org online. If you need assistance with this, come on down and see one of your residential health services nurses. Thank you for attending this presentation. I hope you found the information to be valuable. If you have further questions or want to discuss your options related to arthritis management, come talk to me. I have an open door policy so you can stop down to residential health services anytime or you can call me at 630-681-4037 or email me at gregbeth at windermerelcs.com. That information is on the screen in front of you now. Remember, you are not alone. You have options. We are here to support you. Goodbye for now and best wishes.